All right, so in this video, we're going to be making use of the Scrapey Python package. This will allow us to scrape various content from some websites. And what we'll be doing in this video is just installing the Scrapey package, making sure that you have it on your machine, and just using a very basic project to get us started. Uh, specifically, what we'll be going through is this project here on the main Scrapey tutorial website. So this is in the official Scrapey documentation. I'll leave a link to this below. So if you want any more information on what we'll be covering in this video, uh, more information can be found here. And I'm not going to go through the entire thing in this in this first video on Scrapey, but I will go over Scrapey in more detail. Uh, also more focus on um, more practical uses of Scrapey. But if you have any more questions, feel free to either leave them in the comments or consult this web page here. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be scraping content from this website here, this Quotes to Scrape. And specifically what we're going to be doing is really just extracting all of the HTML on a few of these pages. So as you navigate through, there's a number of different pages that have some quotes on them, and what we'll be doing is we'll just be extracting the entire HTML content of a specified URL and then saving that HTML uh, to a file. So that's kind of the majority of what we're going to be doing. Surely uh, in your day-to-day -day scraping tasks, this is probably something that's a little bit too general in scope. You will most likely be focused on scraping actual content. So for instance, maybe authors of quotes or the quotes themselves instead of the actual uh, entire content. Um, but in this first tutorial, this is just to kind of get us started with Scrapey and to get us um, and to get us up and running. So let me minimize this and let me go to the terminal and the file explorer here. And what I'm going to assume is I'm going to assume that you have both Python and pip installed. Pip is Python's package manager. And if you have both of those things installed, that's great. You're ready to go. Uh, if you don't, I'll leave links to how you can download both of those things in the description as well. Uh, assuming you do have Python and pip, all you need to do is navigate to your terminal uh, if you're in Linux or your command prompt if you're on Windows. And you can type in pip or pip3 if you're using Python 3 install Scrapey. So I'm going to run this command, but I've already had uh, Scrapey installed. So we're going to see a lot of these requirements already satisfied because it's already on my machine. If you don't have it installed already on your machine, it will go and install these packages, uh, Qlib, you know, LXML, everything that's just listed here will be installed on your machine. And then you should be ready to go. So let me clear this. And one way we can check if Scrapey is installed on our machine is we can just open up a Python shell in the terminal and we can just type in import Scrapey. And if this command goes and nothing is spit out at the end there, it means that no warnings or errors were thrown. It knows where this is and we have Scrapey installed and ready to use on our machine. So I'm going to exit out of this terminal knowing that we have that all set up. I'm going to give it a clear. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start a project. Uh, a Scrapey project. So what I'm doing here is I'm in the terminal and I'm located in the terminal in the same location as uh, the file explorer here on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Scrapey command that will generate, uh, automatically generate some files that we will use uh, to use to do our scraping. So that command is going to be Scrapey start project and then a name. So I'm going to call this um, project tutorial. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, if you're following along, I'd recommend just naming these things consistently so that way you kind of see where these names are used. So I'm going to run this command here, hit enter. We'll see a message that says this was uh, created and indeed now we see this tutorial folder here on the right. And if we open up this tutorial folder, uh, we see that it's automatically generated a number of Python files. So we'll go through exactly what these uh, other files can be used for. Um, but in this tutorial, all we're going to be doing is focusing on this spiders folder here, which is in tutorial, tutorial spiders. It's a bit redundant perhaps, but that's how Scrapey creates the projects. Anyway, in the spiders folder, we're going to create uh, a specific spider to scrape the content of the quotes to scrape website and that is more or less the brains of how um, our scraping logic is going to behave. So we're going to create a Python file 
in this directory. I'm going to call it quotes spider.py. And this, if we open up this file, is going to be where we're going to write the majority of the logic that Scrapey is going to make use of to scrape the quotes page. So we're going to step through that bit by bit, and um, let's just get to it. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to import Scrapey, because we're obviously going to be making use of that. And then I'm going to define a class, which I'm going to call quotes scraper. And anytime we create a spider uh, file in this folder, Scrapey is essentially going to look here to see how many spiders we have defined, and we can invoke specific spiders that we write um, by making a class and all of these classes that we write are going to inherit from um, a spider class. So spider spider is a class that Scrapey provides to us and all of these, these spiders that we write will inherit a lot of the properties from the base spider class. If uh, that doesn't make sense, essentially Scrapey provides for us sort of an interface to use where we can make use of a lot of the um, spider or scraping content that is already provided to us from the Scrapey package, and we can just make use of it and use it in this class that we define. So what we're going to define now is a variable called name, and I'm going to call this quotes. So this name is how we refer to the spider when we actually want to run it. So what we'll do after we write this spider is we'll actually get it to run, and we'll do that in terminal, and the way I'll refer to that spider is through whatever I call uh, this name here. So the Scrapey essentially goes to the spider and looks for this thing to be defined, and that's how it refers to this uh, spider by name. So the next thing that we're going to do is define a list of what we're going to call start URLs. And this is just going to be a list of the URLs that we're going to scrape content from. And in this video, we're just going to scrape content from, let's say, um, let me see, let me, if I go to next, right? So if I just take this thing here, so I'm going to copy the link here from this quotes page, put it in here, and I'll paste another one here with quotes and I'm going to change that 2 to a 1. So essentially it's going to start off on this first page of quotes and then we're also going to extract the content from this second page of quotes as well. And as I mentioned, we're really just going to extract the entirety of the HTML of this page. So for instance, if I go back to this page here, this first page, if I just right click um, anywhere on the page and say view page source, what we're going to be doing is it's just extracting all of this content and storing it in an HTML file and saving that HTML file to our uh, working directory. So let's go back to our spider. We have some start URLs and what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through the, those URLs and actually um, make a request. So some of the stuff that I'm going to be writing is maybe not um, is something that you haven't seen before and if that's the case then I'll refer you to the tutorial page for Scrapey. Um, I will explain a little bit of it, but we'll probably get to some of the nitty gritty about what is precisely going on in this line in a later video. So I'm just going to write this out and explain it uh, a little bit. So essentially what we're going to do is loop through uh, these URLs, and actually I should say this is URLs, not start URLs. We're going to loop through these URLs in this list and we're going to uh, make a request using Scrapey and we're going to in that request send the URL that we're on and also a callback function that will actually uh, essentially implement logic that will scrape the content of the site that we happen to be passing to the request. So let me actually write that out. So we're going to say yield Scrapey.request and we're going to pass it the URL that we're on in the loop and also a callback function which we have yet to implement in this in this class, but we will call this callback function parse. So essentially what we're going to pass this request is the URL that we're on in this loop, and then also the uh, callback, which is the function that it's going to refer to for this URL. So we have to actually write this thing and implement it in this class. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to, actually what I should do is I should put this in a function. So I'm going to put this content that we've written so far into a function that I'm going to call start requests. So this is a 
class function here. It's part of the quote spider class. I'm going to indent that so that's part of this function here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement this callback function. So let's go ahead and do that. So, oh man, there. Parse is the name of it. And this is going to take self because it's a member of this quote spider class. And also, uh, or also I probably, I have quote scraper up here. So I should change this to quotes spider. And the second thing it's going to take is a response. So now what we want to do in this parse function is implement the primary logic with which the content of the page that we're on in the loop will have the information extracted and saved to an HTML file. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to define a variable called page, which is going to extract the number from the URL that we're on. And the way in which it does that is a little bit, um, a little bit verbose and not clear. So I'm just going to write it out and tell you that exactly what's going on here is all it's doing is it's just checking the URL, splitting it by these characters here, and then essentially extracting the last two characters of the URL that we're on. So that is essentially going to extract the number of the page, store that in this page variable. So as we loop through the, the links, we'll have the page variable that corresponds to one, two, three, so on and so forth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use that page variable to define the file name, which is the name of the file that we'll save the content to. And we'll call the file quotes dot dash percent s dot html. And the percent s is an argument where we can pass a string to this location here. And in that case, what we want to pass it is the page. So this is the page number that just gets put in here. So we'll have, in this case, two file names, quotes one.html and quotes two.html. So now what we want to do is we want to, for each of these links, store the HTML content in each of these files that we will generate. So I'm going to say with open file name, and we're going to write the file, write bytes, as f. And then what I want to do is I want to say f.write response.body. So essentially what this is doing is it's referring to the response variable that was sent through this parse function here and it's just extracting the body or the HTML content of that entire response. So the response is the entire page that was sent back to us from either of these links and the body is just all of that HTML. So we're literally just writing all of the HTML to the file name, which again is defined up here. And then that's pretty much all we need to do. The last thing that I'll do here, just for our own benefit, is I'll say self.log saved file percent s and then percent file name. Again, this is just passing in the string file name here, depending on whatever file name we happen to be on for this uh, call to this parse function. And this will just be something that would be spit out to the terminal when we actually run the quote spider. We'll see this as just kind of a, a helpful little uh, message to ourselves so that way we know what the spider is doing. So that's pretty much all we need to do for this spider. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file here and I'm going to go back to the terminal and I'm also going to open up the spiders folder here. And what I want to make sure that I do is I cd over to the tutorial directory. So that was the project that was created from Scrapey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Scrapey crawl and then in this case quotes. This quotes again refers to the name that we gave this, this quote spider. So in this case I called it quotes and that's how I'm going to actually invoke this spider in this uh, call here. So I'm going to hit enter and then we'll see a bunch of output here. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, you'll, you'll see a few things like uh, debug crawled 200 which means that it successfully was able to navigate to this particular page here. Um, there's a lot of other information that uh, is a little bit uh, I guess not really so useful to us for this particular tutorial, but in coming videos, some of this other information will be will be uh, quite useful. So we see our log message here, saved file quotes one dot html. We see our uh, saved file quotes two dot html um, log statements that we put out here in the terminal. And indeed, if we go to the tutorial folder, 
we see that now there's these two quotes that HTML files that were generated from running this this scrapey uh, spider so if we look at what these look like then we see that this is just again the HTML from the quotes one page so again that is really just the content of the view page source so as I mentioned really what you want um, when you're doing these things for your own purposes you probably want to scrape individual or specific content off of a page and in the coming videos we will indeed touch on that in greater detail so this was just kind of getting scrapey up and running uh, so I hope this video was helpful to at least get a very uh, quick working example of scrapey uh, if you enjoy this video please let me know if you have any questions or comments please leave them uh, below as well and uh, thanks again for watching.